Hi there, everybody. Hi. So first of all, um, just a shout out to Jen and Jason and the whole opensource.com team. They've done a fantastic job putting t together a great day for the moderators. And this lightning talk is a real privilege. It's my first time in Raleigh. So just round of applause. Thank you, everyone. So um, yes, this, this talk is entitled Adventures in Hackademia. And uh, like many of you, I, I wear a lot of hats. So uh, I was a Google Summer of Code mentor for Sugar Labs. I'm uh, the resident academic and open sorcerer, sorry for the magic pun, at the Center for Media Arts, Games, Interaction, and Creativity, or the Magic Center at RIT. Also organized a bunch of meetups, very similar to the Red Hat meetup. I do the Python user group, the OLPC user group, tech startups, hacks and hackers, which partners journalists and technologists to build the future of news. It's a very cool organization. And uh, a new hat that I just started wearing recently was a professor. Um, I'm teaching uh, two courses and picking up a third and possibly a fourth in the near term. Um, they are a lot of fun, and uh, they help students get involved with open source. So we do a lot of student engagement on campus, and there are a number of ways that people can get involved, not just students, but oh, it's open to the public as well, at Rochester Institute of Technology in upstate New York. Uh, social coding and being contributors and getting involved with the coursework as well. So uh, we run lots of hackathons and meetups and things like that. We've run about 50 hackathons in the past five years. Um, there are a variety of ways for students to get involved from doing work for hire, independent study courses where they can get academic credit for building open source projects and participating in communities of practice. We try to hire students and pay them to write open source code to show them that you can make money doing this sort of thing. That's kind of why they go to school. We help to provide research fellowships for students so that they can hack on things and the upstream community doesn't necessarily have to cough up all of the sponsorship to do that. We try to help where we can, including through programs like Google Summer of Code. And now, we have an academic minor. It's the first one in the United States, as far as we know, where students can actually go through uh, one of two tracks. So it's the first minor at our university that has a technical and a non-technical track. There are three required courses. One is a humanitarian FOSS course, which I'll talk a lot about in a minute. Um, we have a free and open source culture course that talks about you know, where copyright began and where it's going now. And also a legal and business environment of FOSS that's going to be a lot of fun to teach in the spring. Then we have a pick one where you can do either software development on Linux systems or tech writing because we all know FOSS projects probably need some help with documentation. And then at the end, um, you actually apply the stuff that you learned in a buffet of electives that are part of your major. So uh, text and code is a project out of the liberal arts, but it's about using code to tell stories and science fiction writing and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, we have a natural language processing course that uses Python and NLTK. That's a lot of fun for students to use and some language technology courses as well. Um, on the tech side, we have an advanced project in FOSS course where I do five week release cycles on the Raspberry Pi and students can build pretty much whatever they want. It's a lot of fun. Um, we have a computer system forensic course and a foundations of mobile design course. And the idea is, is that all these courses use open source or free software in some way, shape, or form in the class. So you have a student who's gone through the minor. If they find something in that course that they don't like or they wish was a little more robust, they can actually dive in and fix it and help other people. So the idea is, is that you become sort of the community person for your class. And that sort of way of taking on your own problems and scratching your own itch will hopefully propagate throughout other majors as they see people diving in and getting their hands dirty. So that's sort of the whole flow. Um, right now we're adding more electives to the buffet as we go along, but that's the core. And I'm teaching three of these courses over the course of this year and possibly an advanced course uh, in th using free software to do 3D printing, which is going to be a lot of fun. That's my Twitter blowing up, probably. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so the HVOS course. Um, this is probably one of my favorites. Um, it's open courseware, so it's a flash stack with bootstrap on top, Mako templates. It's Python. It's deployed to OpenShift. Um, we use Travis now, so there's continuous integration and testing. All the content is released CC by SA, and everything's up on GitHub. And the way the course works is a lot of fun. I take attendance in IRC. I have a bot. I track people's blogs with web scrapers. They have to maintain uh, an RSS feed, and I check how many posts they've had versus how long it's been and count up how many assignments I've assigned, and I can grade them on the fly. 
uh, and they turn in their homework via pull requests. So they're actually submitting patches to the courseware with links to their stuff. So it's fully open and it's a lot of fun. Um, I also have a bug fix assignment that I do where students get, they have to contribute to an open source project on an existing ticket. Uh, they're graded on the blog post where they talk about their rationale for why they picked it and what they did and who they talked to about it. And if it's accepted upstream, they get extra credit. And I have no cap on the extra credit. So I have a lot of hackers who are totally gaming my class, and they're submitting like 20 patches by the end of the course, and they deserve to get all the credit that they can get because it's not about reading books about swimming, it's about diving in and actually doing the things. That's how I feel about it. The university hasn't stopped me yet. We're having a lot of fun. And the final project for that course is to develop an educational game or tool based on the fourth grade math curriculum in New York and Massachusetts and released on the XO laptop of one laptop per child. So they're the little green laptops that go all over the world. It was a UN initiative. Um, it uses Sugar desktop environment, which is all Python, which is nice. Um, the students are getting exposed to that sort of development. And this is what it looks like all over the world. Um, the deployments, uh, contrary to the rumors, uh, OLPC and Sugar Labs is still kicking. There are three and a half million of these machines deployed all over the world with over 600,000 in places like Uruguay and Paraguay forming the backbone of the public education system in those countries. Every student gets one when they go into primary school and they have them all the way through high school. So this is how grading works, boring. Uh, this is what the life cycle looks like. We start with the courses that hopefully beget projects that turn into scholarship opportunities that then turn into internships that then beget mentors who can come back and you know, help the next flock of students do what they do. So this is just one small piece of the pie and the HVAS course is the gateway. So rather than go through everything, I'll just hit the highlights. Um, we set up their blogs and get them on IRC. They have to do writing and reading on what is open source. So I actually crowdsource my reading list at hacker conferences asking them, asking people, you know, if there's one particular thing that you wish you learned about or heard about before you graduated from school or that you think a college student should hear about before they graduate, what is that thing? And I've gotten that still, patches are welcome, let me know because the, the best reading list is the one that people actually use in the industry, not just what, you know, some book I wrote as a professor that I decide I want to make money off of, right? So we talk about community architecture. Uh, we do get by a bus to analyze source code repositories. We figure out who the lead developers are and how to get involved, point to issue trackers, talk about curriculum, talk about scoping, and then we get on into development, do another lit review. We play test with actual fourth graders in a STEM school in our district, and then they give final presentations where community groups can come. The story is still unfolding and patches are always welcome. I'm constantly open to guest lecturers coming into my classroom. I run an open classroom, so if you ever find yourself in upstate New York, in Rochester, and you have something you'd like to share with our students, please reach out and let me know because you are exactly the type of people who should be you know, helping to shape the young minds that are coming out of schools today. That's really what's gonna help bring the open source way to all the industries and practices and schools and other places that it needs to go. And we need as much help as we can get to do it. Thank you.